Hey guys, in this video, we'll be doing a practice problem on kinematics of linear motion. We'll be dealing with an equation of motion of velocity as a function of time. And from there, we're going to be finding acceleration, maximum velocity. We're also going to be finding displacement. Let's get right to the question. A particle moves along a straight line from a fixed point O. Its velocity V is given by this equation. V is equals to 90 minus 3 T squared where t is the time in seconds after passing through O. There's a very important point from this line. t is the time after passing through O, which means when t is equal to 0 at the time 0, the displacement of the object is 0 as well. t is 0, s is 0. Let's look at the first question. Find the maximum velocity of the particle. So in this case, Whenever you see the word maximum or minimum velocity, the first thing that should come to mind is at the maximum or minimum velocity, the acceleration of the object, the instantaneous acceleration of the object will be zero. So first we need to make use of the fact that acceleration equals to zero. However, the question has only given us velocity as a function of time. V is 90 minus 3 T squared. And so how do we obtain acceleration from this. So what happens when you differentiate velocity with respect to time? Now we have velocity as a function of time. So what happens when I do dv dt? dv dt is the change in velocity over the change in time. And so that is acceleration. When we want to get acceleration and we are given a velocity function, then all we have to do is differentiate the function with respect to t. So acceleration will be equals to dv dt, differentiate v with respect to t, and we get 9 minus 6t. And so now we can substitute acceleration is equals to 0 into this formula. So a is equals to 0, what we get is 9 minus 6t is equals to 0. So t will be equals to 3 over 2 seconds. This is the time at which the velocity is maximum. But this does not answer the question yet because the question is asking for the maximum velocity. But since we have the time at which velocity is max, we can substitute this back into our velocity equation to find the maximum velocity. And therefore, v max maximum velocity will be equals to 9t, which is 3 over 2, minus 3 t again 3 over 2 squared and the answer that we will get here is 6.75 meters per second so this is the maximum velocity of the object let's go on to the next question find the range of time in seconds when the particle is decelerating when the particle is decelerating acceleration is less than zero however it's very important to remember that this is only the case if the motion of the object is in the positive direction. That is to say, the object is only decelerating when acceleration is negative, when the velocity is positive. We've already obtained the formula for acceleration. A is equals to 9 minus 60. Now we want to find the range of t for which acceleration is negative. A is less than 0. When A is less than 0, 9 minus 6 T is less than 0. And therefore, T is more than 3 over 2. However, this is not the end of the story. The particle is only decelerating if its acceleration and its velocity are in opposite directions. If they are both in the same direction, whether it's positive or negative, then the object will actually be accelerating. So how do we check this? We just have to do a very quick sketch of the velocity. Our velocity function is v is equals to 9t minus 3t squared. If we do a quick factorization, you get t 9 minus 3t. Now we can find the times where velocity is 0. If velocity is 0, then t is 0 or 9 minus 3t is equals to 0. That means t is equals to 3. Now we can do a quick sketch. If we look at the a value, this is a quadratic function. If you look at the a value, it's negative. So we are getting a frown. And so when you sketch the graph here, let's sketch the graph of v against t. 
what you will find is we have an intercept x intercept at 0 and 3 so the graph will look like this it's a frown with two intercepts 0 and 3 so this is the maximum velocity point and this was 3 over 2 when time is 3 over 2 if we take a look at this graph from 3 over 2 onwards the gradient of the graph is negative this means from 3 over 2 onwards the acceleration is going to be in the negative direction however if we look carefully at the velocity the velocity is only positive for this region after three seconds you will notice that the velocity becomes negative as well so after three seconds the velocity will be in the same direction as the acceleration which means the object is no longer decelerating it is in fact accelerating in the opposite direction and so we must be careful when we define when the object is decelerating the object will only decelerate in this range so now we can complete our answer therefore the time in which the object is decelerating is between 3 over 2 and 3 seconds let's go to the next question find the time in seconds when the particle stops instantaneously stops instantaneously means the velocity instantaneous velocity is equals to zero and so we already have our velocity function v is equals to 9t minus 3t square all we have to do is sub v is zero so when v is zero then 9t minus 3t square equals to zero we've already done this when we sketched our graph so just do the same thing here so t is equals to zero or 9 minus 3t equals to 0 and t is equals to 3. Therefore, the time at which the particle stops instantaneously is 3. We've covered velocity and acceleration. Now let's look at displacement. We are supposed to find the total distance traveled by the particle in the first two seconds. Now again, we have velocity. How do we go to distance? When we are going from velocity to displacement, then we need to integrate velocity with respect to time. Remember that integration can be seen as the reverse of differentiation. And so if we are going in the opposite direction, if we went from displacement to velocity, then this would be differentiation of displacement with respect to time. And if we went from acceleration back to velocity, then it would be integration of acceleration with respect to time. Now we have the velocity function with respect to time and we want to find distance. And so all we have to do is integrate velocity with respect to time. So the total distance travel as will be equals to integration of V with respect to time. Now we can do integration with limits because they want the distance travel in the first two seconds. That is from time zero to two seconds. When we are applying the formula, again, we have to be very careful because coming back to our graph, it's always useful to sketch the graph. So when we look at this graph, if you take the time past 3, then we are entering the negative region. And when you integrate the negative region, you will get a negative value for the area. And so what we normally do in integration is you have to add the modulus of the area of the negative region. So we just have to be careful of this fact. But here we are only going from 0 to 2 seconds. So we are still all in the positive region. And so there's no need to do this. So we can straight away do with limits 0 to 2. So this will be equals to integration of 90, just the original function with respect to t. And this would be equals to, let's just do normal integration, 9 over 2t squared, the usual integration, minus 3 over 3t cubed, limits 0 to 2. Of course, 3 over 3 is just 1. So now all we have to do is substitute 2 and 0. This is equals to 9 over 2 times 2 square minus 2 cubed minus when you substitute zero this will be zero and this will be zero so the whole thing is just zero so the answer that we would get here is t 
10. Therefore, the total distance travelled is equal to 10 meters. If you learned something from this video, guys, please do help me hit that like button. Thank you very much for doing that. It really does help the channel a lot. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe because I'll be producing at least one a week. Hope to see you guys in the next video.